Welcome to Books, Beauty, and Business. Our goal is to inspire, motivate, and encourage others through laughter, accountability, success stories, and most importantly, easy steps for achieving greatness. My name is Tawny Bro, and today I'd like to introduce you to our Mother's Day special. Introducing my sweet Ella. She is a 19-year-old college student living away from home. We have a special podcast for those heading off to school and how mom deals with their babies leaving. Thanks to our sponsor, Success Headway, Advertising and Digital Marketing, Automation Systems. So let's jump right in. We are going to jump right in. Thank you for joining us, Ella. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank, so, thank you for coming yeah. home to see me. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit just about your self-adulting and how it's going. So definitely a learning learning curve. Um, but it's not been bad. I will say once I got out of like dorm life, way better. Um Cause like then I get to like pick who I'm around. Cause when you're in the dorms, you don't really get to pick. Definitely stressful moments. Cause you're on your own for the first time, so you're trying to figure everything out. What was the hardest part about you know being in high school and then your first year of college? Would be since I wasn't in like a familiar area because I moved away. Some people stay in the area to go to college that they went to high school in. So it's definitely a very different environment and the amount of people you're around is way bigger. You're also living with people you don't know at all. It's like a very, very small apartment complex and you're living with all these people you don't know. You're like having to fight, figure out things on your own, whether that be where to eat, um where to go time management because in high school all this the schedule is very like back to back like very strict do you go from one class to the other and then when you're done you're done for the day in college it's more you have a f- like two to three classes a day you have to figure out when you're gonna do the assignments for that where you're gonna do in between it doesn't end when you leave it ends whenever you get the stuff done so I think time management and figuring out how to do everything is different. Because in high school, you have a full year. In college, you have a semester, which is shorter. And you only have, it's way more of a time crunch than in high school, I would say. What's your advice for those kids, you know, just leaving high school, it's their very first experience, they're super excited, like, what advice do you have for them? Um, it's bad, because freshman year, I guess you could say you have to be separate, because I did have a, f- I did, like, my friend group was very different in my freshman year of college, I did have a friend that was in biology, and he was very smart, and would study all of the time, And then I would have the friends that would join the frat and go party and all of that. So I would say try to find a balance and don't be too overwhelmed with what's going on around you. Um, Just focus. Like, don't worry about if you're if you're not like FOMO. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Worry about what you're doing. Don't don't feel like you're missing out because there's a billion like if you're having FOMO about a party happening but you have to study that exact same party is going to happen the next week on the same day like you don't need to freak out um so I would just say try to find a balance between social life and school life because I know when you get there it's gonna feel like a lot so don't freak out if you're far away from your parents you're going to feel like by yourself, which sucks, but it goes away. So what's your um, advice for handling, you know, the whole, you don't have anyone there telling you, do your homework, go wash your clothes. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, how do you handle all that? It gets super messy and then I get fed up and then I clean it all. Like I clean it all and then I leave it. And then I'll clean it like a week later. So it's, it's, if you're more of an organized person, I would say, um, clean, 
more often. And don't let don't let things get too too like overwhelming. Cause I will say if you leave it too long, it does get overwhelming. You're looking at everything and you're like, what do I where am I gonna start? Mm -hmm. So one step at a time. Finances on your own. Keep track of what you're, even if you're not making the great decisions, keep track of what you are spending your money on and where your money is going. Because I know nobody can really afford to have a savings account. So as long as your bills are paid and everybody in your household is alive, I will say, you're doing fine. Another thing would be like food intake because when you leave, you have to kind of, you know, feed yourself and what you're eating definitely because I know most people don't go in with a lot of thought about how food affects your body. So it is definitely hard when the cheaper foods are unhealthier most like usually fast food and the unhealthy foods are the cheapest thing and that's what you can afford um i will say an advice would just be to instead of paying for the cheaper things so for example say you get ramen because i know a lot of people that just eat ramen and it's like 89 cents a bag or whatever um instead of buying like five things of ramen i will say buy in bulk um not ramen but um like for example rice because um things in bulk it'll last you way longer and it will help you not feel as bad and in the end you'll be saving money because instead of buying like unhealthy stuff that lasts you one meal you can spend a little bit more and it'll last you like almost a week so i will say for money and for food, that is definitely something that you should look into. Because, um, again, that will end up saving you money. And that you'll also feel better. Because I know when you put, like, fast food in your body, you don't feel as energized. And that will help with, like, mental health and stuff. Your um, mental health up. Like, what did you... Because it's stressful, right? Being away that first year, especially. Like, any advice on just mental health and how to stay, like not like not with all the anxiety and all the things that it sounds like kids are having to deal with today how did you handle that i guess the first year was definitely a roller coaster in the aspects of mental health you go to college and you're by yourself and you're with these new people and you're you've never done this before and all these other things that are happening you have to you're kind of overwhelmed so i will say once it's kind of inevitable, like not to sound scary, but it's kind of inevitable to kind of realize your situation and maybe cry a little bit about it. That's that's the initial thing. But once you kind of like get out of that 30 minute cry session or rut or whatever that you're in and you calm down and you're back to the thing, you can, I would just say assess your situation and what you need to do. There's multiple different things that you're feeling when you're when you're doing this for the first time, whether it be being overwhelmed, overstimulated, or like feeling alone or like stressed out about work or school. Again, just finding a balance. I think the main stressor is people are worried about their future, like to the point where they can't focus on what's going on in the moment because they're so stressed about what's going to happen in like the next day, the next month, the next year. People either set these goals for themselves or just don't like they almost scare themselves, I would say, because they're like, what if I don't do it? So I would say, if anything, take it day by day, but then also set your goals but make them realistic and write things down just break it down for yourself so time management break it down for yourself have a balance and then some days are just going to be worse than others so i will say find something that comforts you and like on tv or something and just use that day because not every day is going to be perfect so i will say use like a day here and there to reset and be able to 
recollect yourself and redo the steps of writing things down and planning things out. I love that. Getting into the questions on books, beauty, and business, do you have a favorite book that you can re that you would recommend? I know everybody says this, but Atomic Habits is a good book. And I love Atomic Habits. There's another book, but I can't think of the name. But it I'll just say what the book basically says. It's set time aside for hobbies and stuff and be creative. Cause I know creativity is one of the um biggest things that can help you in times of stress. And also another tip, side note, let yourself be bored. Um, do, like, for example, if you're cleaning, you don't need to be listening to music or watching a show or doing something like another media source on the side. Because if you just let yourself be bored, your brain will think on its own to the point where you can have new ideas or like figure out problems because when I'm cleaning and I'm not doing anything and I'm just thinking, I think of the craziest things and I'm like, well, that was interesting or like a new idea or I'll think about the issues that I'm having and being able to think about that without being stressed out about it and without having another source of media. It can, in the end, help you solve problems because I definitely will say I've had a lot of issues where I get really not a lot, but like I'll have issues here and there where I'll get really emotional or really pumped up about it in a negative way at the time. And I'll be so like, I don't know the word, but I'll be ac like accusing of things like jumping the gun. And then I'll, before I do anything about that, because I, I did have the problem where I would just jump the gun, but then I'm able to stop myself and actually think about what is happening and then assess the situation better and not have the problem to begin with. Because if you're able to just um, think about what's going on, like really think about it and give yourself like different perspectives, then it calms you down and if it'll help you be more creative. It helps you in a lot of ways, whether that be creativity or just problem solving or like if you're having an issue with something or someone, then it definitely helps. So I would say if you're having a problem, don't go on the internet. Because if anything, that'll make it worse. That's such great advice. Like I think people don't in like enjoy quiet time too yeah. anymore. Like we're so overstimulated with phones and screens and TVs and things that I don't even think there's a lot of people that can do that, which is really sad. Yeah. I've had to I've had to make myself do that and it's gone it's definitely gone easier the more I've done it and it's I think I noticed the benefit of it so it's not as difficult now because I could be like this that helps me so I might as well keep doing it and you can you always should set aside time to do things you enjoy whether that be watching a show or something but I will say if you're having a problem there should be like little moments in the day that you just think use your brain <laughs> without like having something else tell it what to do or how it feel. So it's, it's kind of like meditation, even if you're just in a quiet time, Yeah. the, all the people, all the people and all the self-help books on everyone that says anything about taking care of yourself, so yeah, how important it is. But then it's like the easiest thing not to do. Like, yeah. Cause you, you can get so over overwhelmed and overworked to where, you think about it and then that makes you think about something else and then that makes you think about something else and if you can't stop yourself to think you just freak out and have a breakdown or it puts you in like a depressive route so I would say stop to think and have your moments of emotion that you need to have but also logically think about what's going on and you said to meditate which I think is super beneficial I think it also depends on the person because I know it can be hard to make yourself sit down and do the whole meditation thing. So another a thing somebody could do if meditation doesn't seem to work for them, it could be to do mundane tasks without the media. So, for example, if I were to go clean my kitchen right now, I would 
not be watching anything or listening to anything. I would just clean my kitchen. And yes, I'll be thinking about what I'm doing, but I'll also be thinking about like, oh, I should go do that. Or, oh, I need to go do that. Or how to solve this problem that I'm having. So yeah, meditation and then doing things without distraction, I will say is very beneficial. Here's another question for you. What is your favorite beauty tip? Learn how to do makeup for fun events, for professional events, for casual events, for everything really that falls in that category, just because it's better to be able to adapt, like stand out all you want. Because then you don't have to pay people to do your makeup for you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Or when you go into a wedding, you already know how to do it. Nice. So um, do you have any last minute words for the moms out there that are getting ready to let their kids go to college and they're kind of like sad and nervous and, you know, all the things that moms are for their kids? Any advice for the moms? The first year is definitely hard for both parties, kids and parents. Let them ex- like live as an adult going into the world because that's what they are um because i do know some parents that live within like a 10 minute drive of their kid that are that's in college they're 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 they have good intentions obviously or if not oh that's another thing um let them figure things out on their own and give them freedom because i have had friends that like their parents are like, you still have to be home by nine and you can't use your phone after bedtime. Like you have, you have to give them the, like the adult freedom that they should be able to experience because if not, they're going to one, not like you very much. And two, have a more difficult time doing that when they can eventually do that. So I would say the, the, the earlier you learn certain things, it helps you in the long run because for example, if you learn something at 18, whether you learn it at 22, by, if you learn it at 18, by the time you're 22, you're way more experienced and have how, and having to deal with those situations, whether if you're not allowed to learn it and then you learn it at 22, you're a newbie. And the other people that are 22 know how to do that. So you can definitely check up on them and let them do their thing, but you can't stop them from making dumb decisions because not that they will oh, his cows. not that they will make dumb decisions but you know you kind of just i would say just support them in the things that they're going through cuz they'll probably call you all the time and be like oh my god this guy did this to me or whatever and or like grades or something so i would say just give as much support as possible but also like constructive criticism. You're a parent. Constructive criticism is like a thing y'all do. Um, so constructive criticism, support, but also give them advice, but don't not let them learn from the things that they're doing. Like as long as they're safe. If you know about that, I would advise advise them to not do that. But again, they're adults, so they can do what they would like. So let them experience things. And then help them when they need help and give them advice when they need help. Because they're going to do it whether you know or not. So you might as well be in the loop about it. But don't worry either because a lot of us don't make those crazy decisions. <laughs> it, de- it depends on how you're raised, really. I will say if you're the type of person, to, like, for example, you, you were not very, in my high school, you were not very strict on what I could and couldn't do compared to other people that I knew and I will say those people now like from what I've seen stricter parents cause their children to be mm, I don't want to say not like them but one not like them as much but also more sneaky and like lie so that they can do certain things because like yeah yeah open communication and letting them do what they would like will cause them to like come to their own thinking and decide if they want to do it or not 
because if you have that strictness where you're like, no, you can't do that, they're either going to do it out of spite because you told them not to and because either there are so many scenarios. But, for example, if, like, they were really strict, they're going to do it out of spite. They're not going to be able to experience those things with the permission, so they're going to do it without the permission. And, one, they're not going to tell you about it whether if you were open, they would tell you about it and you could give them advice for that situation. And two, I feel like a lot more things could go wrong if you're not in that open communication with your kid. And they again, they can make their own decisions and decide whether they want to do something or not. But if you're not in the loop, they could be doing so many things and you would never know. Yeah, I think that's a really hard thing for parents to wrap their heads around too. Because ultimately, their goal is keeping their child safe, keeping them protected. Yeah. And then when it goes too far or you don't have that open communication, that's like a parent's worst nightmare. So yeah, good to know that, um, you know, that you feel comfortable and open, but also, man, for these kids that, you know, kids are going to make dumb decisions and that's why they're kids and they're going to learn and that's why adults have the experience to help them and guide them like hey in this situation this is yeah this is not good or this is good or hey I've been there before and let, let me tell you my story so you don't make those mistakes like you don't have to make all the yeah. mistakes that other people do especially if you know about them so I think that's great advice just to keep up with your kids but let them be adults I call you a baby adult you're like out there <laughs> Adulting, but you're still a baby adult. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been really fun. Um, it's been really fun talking to you about all these topics, Ella. I love to hear what you have to say for the freshmen, um, for the high schoolers that are getting ready to go to college, for the parents. I think this has been really fun. So, I really appreciate your time. Of course, okay. I'm here all the time. <laughs> I never leave. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much. And to our listeners, if you have any questions for us, you can always make comments or write in. We'll be happy to um, follow up. And thank you so much for listening. You guys have a great day. Bye. Bye.